Hello and welcome back to Missionary Story. It's day five. That means today you get to hear the end of the story. You remember that at the end of day four, Joe was going on a helicopter to the Wycliffe Bible Translator Center. And we said that she did that once a month and she had been doing it for all the years she was there. At the center, she would type up on a typewriter because we didn't have computers in those days. She would type a letter that was going back to America to all the people who had been praying for her and for the Balangao people. And so today, this day, Joe was writing something special in the letter. She often asked the people to pray for certain things this time she was asking them to especially pray that the believers, the people in Balangal who had come to believe in the Lord Jesus as their savior from sin, that they would really learn to pray. Not just how to pray, how to talk to God, but that they would learn to depend on him in prayer. Ask him for the things they needed, trust him and talk to him and get to know him, get to know the Lord Jesus through prayer. And as she was typing that letter up, uh, Joe prayed and she said, Lord, I don't care what you have to do, just do something to help the Balangal learn to pray. And then she looked up at the clock and she realized it was soon time to get the helicopter to fly back to Balangal. So she gathered her things, the letter was finished, it was going to go out in the mail to America. And she headed out across the field to the helicopter, not the helicopter they had come on. J Joe had had been told that they were taking back a huge military helicopter. They had that because they were taking more people and lots of supplies. Joe was going back, Doming was there because he had been in college in a different village and he had a break, so he was flying back to Balangao to visit for a bit. Uh, Mr. Bill Powell, their normal uh, pilot, was going with them. But he wasn't flying that helicopter. There were two military pilots who were going to fly it. He was just helping them to know where to go, where to land, and that sort of thing. And a man named Dr. Lim was going along. He was coming to Balangal to build a clinic, something like a hospital for the people there. Well, he was going to do that. He had all his supplies in that helicopter. So he had nails and tools and roofing supplies and tons of bags, 10 tons of bagged powdered cement. Now you know what cement is when you mix it, it gets hard, maybe it makes a porch or a floor. Well, this hadn't been mixed yet, it was powdered still. And as they all climbed in and Joe sat down on a bag of cement to ride back to Valangal, Dr. Lim said, that's okay, but be careful. Don't get any of that powdered cement on your skin. If you do that, it'll sting and burn. And then he said, be especially careful not to get any of it on your hands and then in your eyes because that will really sting. Well, Joe wasn't worried. It was a short trip, about half an hour. The, the helicopter took off and they were flying before long. There they were over Bullingale. And Bill Powell was telling the other pilots, see that clearing over there? That's a good place to bring her down. But as they tried to land the helicopter, something went terribly wrong. They lost control, it crashed into the side of the mountain, and the helicopter was coming down. They were crashing. And the blades of the helicopter threw the cargo, that, the nails, the building supplies, it, it tore open the bags of cement, and powdered cement went everywhere, and they crashed and they were buried under it. Well, Bill Powell, because he was in the front, even though he was hurt, he was able to break out the cockpit window and he climbed out and the other two pilots climbed out and he turned around and he looked back and he prayed, oh no, dear God, please help. The helicopter is on fire. Well, some of the Balangals saw what had happened and they came running to help. But the two military pilots shouted, no, 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 get away, it's gonna explode. Bill shouted out, wait, Joe Doming and Dr. Lim are still buried under that. We need help. And so then they all came rushing back. And Joe was buried under piles of cement. And she was praying, God, I can't die yet. 
If I do, who will finish translating the Bible for the Balangao people? And so she shouted, yelling as loud as she could. And they heard her. And they uncovered her. And they took her and Doming and Dr. Lim out of the wreckage. Meanwhile, someone had gone to tell Ama and Tekla what had happened. And Ama was coming running from his house. And he was praying as he ran, God, don't let my son Doming and my American daughter Joe die in the same day. And Tekla had been praying as she was running, Oh, holy God, it's up to you. If you want our word in your language, let Joe live. And then she added a, a prayer of real faith. And God, when I see Joe, if I say her name, and the first thing she says back to me is my name, I will know that Joe will live. Well, Joe was there. She barely noticed her broken bones and her cuts because what she was noticing was that she had gotten cement in her eyes and it was burning and stinging and she called out to the women that were there please wash my eyes with water wash it out of my eyes but when they put the water on it made it sting more and so they wanted to stop but she said no no keep doing it Tekla arrived and she saw Joe far away. She saw what was happening and she shouted, Joe, Joe! And Joe said back, Tekla, is that you? Tekla shouted, she's going to live! I know she's going to live! And she rushed up to Joe and she fell down on her knees and took her hands and she said, Joe, what can I do to help you? Well, Joe, from her medical training, knew that she was going into shock. And so she said, raise my feet, cover me with a warm blanket, give me strong coffee to drink. And then she whispered, and Tekla, whatever you do, don't stop washing my eyes out with that water. Don't stop. And so that's what Tekla did. And you know that before long, Joe's eyesight came back. She was beginning to heal. And she went back to working on translating the New Testament part of the Bible into the Balangal language. And it wasn't long. The day came when the book was finished. They had the New Testament part of the Bible in their own language. They held a huge celebration, two days of celebrating. And as was fitting, Amma led all the events. A thousand people came, and Joe honored him by giving him the first printed copy of the Balangal New Testament. Amma held the book high, and he shouted, This is what we have been waiting for. Thank God that he has been merciful to let me live to see this day. And the whole crowd set up happy cheers. About 10 months after that celebration, Joe went back to America to visit all the people who had been praying for her for all of these years and praying for the Balangao people. And she got news that Ama, who was now a very old man, had gotten very sick. People gathered around him and they prayed through the night. But toward morning, all of a sudden Ama sat up in his bed and he said out loud, it is okay. You can take me now, Lord Jesus. And then Amma died. He closed his eyes here on the earth, but he opened his eyes in heaven. And at the moment that Amma died, there was a massive earthquake that shook the entire region. Jo was so sad when she heard that her Balangao father, Ama, had gone on to heaven. But she was also so thankful. Twenty years she had worked there with the Balangao people. And God had used her, Jo Shetler, a little shy, scared little girl from a farm in America, to do something that would last forever. God had used her to give the Balangao people his book in their language. And those people, Ama, Tekla, and all the others, had been forever changed by this book. 
What about you? Have you been changed by God's book, the Bible? If you've believed in the Lord Jesus as your Savior, oh yes, He has changed you. Little by little, He's forgiven you, and little by little, you're coming to be more like the Lord Jesus. If you haven't believed in Him, if you don't know Him as your good Father, if he, you have not asked Him and trusted Him to forgive your sins, I pray that you will do that. And you will let this wonderful book, the Bible, God's book, change you. Thanks for being part of our missionary story, and I'll see you soon.